Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Peter Kahn, George you, mate. Thank you very much for giving me some of your time. Um, yeah, this is a big, big fight week. It has that big fight week feel. It has a huge big white, uh, big, you know, fight week feel. I mean, uh, main event, undisputed. Uh, what else can you ask for? Uh, it seems like there's no love loss between the two. I think there's respect, but I think it's going to be a great fight. I feel like he's a bit of a two fingers to some of the male fighters in getting fights done. I like it when up there it was said how easy it was to make this fight. Five minutes, undisputed fight. No, this is a fight both the ladies want, they need, and easy, easy going. Yeah, it was an easy fight to make because Franchone's philosophy, look, she's already been the longest reigning super middleweight female champion. She's already become undisputed. She's the Ring Magazine champion. Uh, now it's just about fighting the best possible matchups, the biggest names, uh, where she can headline and where there would be a lot of interest. And that brought us here. I mean, there's no way about that. I mean, Savannah Marshall in the UK, uh, not too far from her, from her home, uh, is, you know, made a lot of sense. Obviously, Frenchon was over for the Clarissa Shields fight. Would I be right in presuming that she perhaps had a look around the O2 and went, I need a piece of this? Because that night at the O2 just kind of blew things to a new level over here. Absolutely. What a great card that was in October. Uh, between the main event, between, uh, you know, Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall, and you had uh, Michaela Mayer and Alicia Baumgartner. I mean, what a great show. Uh, not just for women's boxing, like I said earlier today, but boxing in general, and the fact that women could could sell those tickets, could could get the fans to come out, and we saw two great fights. So, you know, that was a bonus, and of course, I mean, that, that was on the heels of April, where she had become undisputed uh, in a sold-out Madison Square Garden with Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. So, I think that's a trend. Uh, and like I said, we have no problem coming here. How many fighters come to the United States, never even think about it, and, and come over there because, you know, especially with men, because they know that's where the money is. And so we felt like coming here would be a, a great opportunity. Yeah, it's great to see French on fighting on these shores. Um, if you were to hang up the gloves before this fight, she will go down as an icon of female boxing. It takes a different athlete to still have that hunger, still want to achieve. Um, can you kind of give us a little bit perhaps into her mindset, just kind of away from the cameras, away from the lights and, and the press conferences, of just kind of the mentality that someone like Franchon Cruz de Zern has? Franchon's always evolving. She's not just one thing. I referred to her yesterday as a renaissance woman uh, in the sense that she's into fashion, she's into music. You can sing. Well, let me tell you this, and, you know, uh, go check it out. Uh, music Week... Uh, she's number 19 on the Music Week uh, commercial pop club charts right now uh, with her song Secret Place. You can find it everywhere. Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube. Anywhere where you download and stream music, you can find it. And she's moving up the UK charts. Number 19 with Secret Place. Uh, of course, she's so already cemented her legacy in boxing. Uh, I believe she's already a Hall of Famer. Uh, this just further will uh, just, you know, just hammer at that, right? The, and, and that's what she needs at this point. So for her, I think what excites her in life is that she's always uh, evolving, she's always growing, she's always doing more. She's not one-dimensional, it's not just about boxing. But don't get me wrong, she put in a great camp. You can see the difference between her physically from the uh, uh, press conference to kick off the fight to now, uh, and she's ready to fight. Yeah, I can't wait to see them two in the ring. Um, what sort of fight are you expecting? Kind of like Andy said up there with a the press conference, perhaps Franchon's technical ability has been overlooked because we know she's strong and she can dog it out. Um, so what sort of fight are you expecting when these two get in the ring? You know, it's, it's really weird for me. It's strange that people keep saying that because Franchon had a, a very, very strong amateur career. I mean, look, she was in the amateurs and had to go through Clarissa Shields in the nationals, I mean, in the Olympic, you know, trials, that, that was a tall order. I mean, who wants Clarissa uh, when you're trying to make the Olympic team and that's who you got to fight against? And her pro debut, which she took on two and a half weeks notice against Clarissa. So uh, what do I think and how do I think? I think, I think people underestimate Franchone and, and we're fine with that. 
I think that they think she's just going to come out here and, and just be a bully, uh, just try to make it ugly. Uh, I think that until someone's in the ring with her, uh, they don't quite know what she brings to the table. Listen, Savannah Marshall, great fighter, great fighter, uh, uh, great athlete, uh, has a size advantage over Franchone. They have the same reach. Uh, Savannah has a height advantage. Uh, very smart fighter, had a great amateur career as well. Uh, former world champion uh, in the professional ranks. So, you know, like, uh, like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? So we'll see what happens. I, I really think it's a 50-50 fight. I'm very confident uh, because Franchone had a great camp and she's prepared. But at the end of the day, these two women have to go out there on Saturday night and they've got to perform. Yeah, just can't wait to see how this plays out when them two step in the ring and the first bell goes. Um, just one more thing. Obviously, I know you spoke about Clarissa. That name, Clarissa Shields, especially around Savannah, simply because of October. Um, it's always going to be kind of lingering around fight week. I don't know if she's planning to come over. I've heard a few things. Um, but Clarissa and fighting the winner of this fight, um, the name's always going to kind of be there. Absolutely. I mean, look, we're talking about, you know, probably arguably the greatest female professional boxer ever to fight, right? I think that's uh, pretty, pretty much commonly agreed upon, uh, being Clarissa. And I think that, you know, let's see what happens Saturday. May, you know, maybe we'll have an instant classic on our hands and maybe it'll warrant... Maybe, maybe it'll warrant a rematch right away. Who knows, right? But I, I would imagine that, well, let me say this. There is a mandatory in place. So the winner of this fight does have to fulfill the WBC mandatory. Otherwise, that belt comes off the table. So that is something that, that both, uh, both Savannah and Franchone agreed to prior to this fight. But let's see what happens. Let's take one day at a time and, and let's see uh, what kind of fight we have on Saturday night and, you know, go from there. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.